As defined by law, cultural heritage refers to the totality of cultural property preserved and developed through time and passed on to posterity. Cultural property refers to all products of human creativity by which a people and a nation reveal their identity. These include churches, mosques, and other places of worship, schools, and natural history specimens and sites, whether public or privately owned, movable or immovable, and tangible or intangible. In this series of lectures, esteemed educators from our national university lend pertinent discussions, thus open academic discourses on Philippine cultural heritage relating to their respective fields of discipline and expertise. These can and may be used as resource materials for further learning and study. Public intellectual Arnold Azurin, or Lakay to Many, explains to us the making of Filipino identity and heritage through conversion, inversion, and subversion. He points out, through historical events, how locals accepted colonial culture and customized it becoming their own to eventually be used in opposing this foreign imposition. I was just uh, recalling the times of uh, Diego and Gabriela Silang when they tried to take over the capital of uh, Ilocos in Vigan. But uh, unfortunately, even uh, Diego uh, realized that uh, his followers were more Catholic than rebellious. So that uh, when his own friend was uh, convinced by the bishop to just kill his friend Diego, it was an easy matter to, to undertake such assassination. And even the followers of Silang were not uh, very keen in coming to uh, his, uh, let's say, succor. And so when, uh, when Gabriela tried to make a comeback in order to seize the government uh, uh, reins in Vigan. She also didn't succeed in her effort. And what we can say is that at that point in time, Vigan was the bastion of colonization and not only a bastion of uh, political uh, control, but also a, a religious uh, center because it was the capital of the diocese of Nueva Segovia. So uh, what uh, we can say here is that the cultural co conversion of the Ilocanos at that point was uh, more uh, a persuasive uh, part of their uh, lifestyle. But uh, it becomes a different matter when uh, in, ten, in 20, uh, rather in 1807, when the Ilocanos started to wage another rebellion, which is unfortunately called Basi Revolt, uh, more popular, when actually it should be called the Alzamiento of Ambaristo. Alzamiento, just the uprising, because that is what the uh, scholars at the time and the friars called it. 
besides uh, there is no semantic in the English uh, in the Spanish language called basi revolt no uh, that is an americanism and it was even noticed by the art historian art critic uh, Patrick Flores that maybe the basi revolt uh, name is a misnomer and she uh, said that uh, because uh, it uh, the way it labeled the struggle, uh, the bloody struggle, was that uh, it would uh, seem that uh, the the sole uh, purpose of waging is to have more basi in their glasses, and which was not the case. Uh, in fact, it was. Uh, the Basi Revolt label is very unfortunate because it didn't uh, give uh, much uh, value to the struggle for freedom. Uh, but then, uh, it was not only the textbook authors, but also uh, veteran historians who were miscued by the term Basi Revolt. For instance, even Renato Constantino, a, a, a preeminent uh, historian, uh, one time wrote uh, in his column in Bulletin today that uh, this, this, uh, this parodyingly, he said, the Lucanos are sometimes waging rebellions only because they want to drink more basi. Contrary to the legitimacy of the label Basi Revolt as uh, causing uh, the, the anger of the people to become an uproar yes, because they are disgusted with the lack of Basi to drink for their self-indulgence uh, let me go to the observation of the Augustinian provincial at that time, he, he said that the cause of the insurrection of 1807, which we should now call, uh, as it was properly called by historian Isabel de los Reyes, that uh, it should be called Alzamiento de Ambaristo, the uprising of Ambaristo, the leader. Uh, the causes of which was traced by the Augustinian provincial this wise. The Ilocano Indios at the time have become as thieving as those of other provinces. They steal cows, horses, and carabaos from their fellow Indios. And those engaged in these businesses are ready to do bad things. It must not surprise. It must not. It is not surprising that many of these are deserters who started the rebellion in the mountains of Pedig. Others joined them after the fire broke out. Some Spaniards were deserting their ranks, their role as protectors of Bigan, and so this. Uh, lack of basi cannot be considered as the reason for the rebellion. And it should also be considered that uh, other observers like Jesuit Father Vicente Aleman wrote in 1768, that is long before the, the breakout of the uh, Alzamiento, he said that uh, Jesuit Alemans, Jesuit Father Aleman said, a third of the infantry in Vigan and Ilocos was made up of poor exiles from Mexico. The Maestre de Campo was some official who could not go be an Alperez, a lowly official, in the army. Generally, 
those who went to the Philippines at the time were the ones who were too lazy in America called Polisones and had originally fled from Spain. They were criminals. They were exiled Creoles called Quachinangos in the Philippines. That is from Father Jesuit Father Aleman. So what we are saying here is that unlike the Ilocanos and their leaders or the, and their Cailianes in the time of Diego Silang's rebellion, this, th those Ilocanos then should we uh, sh we showed that tend to be uh, more religious and more believing in the power of the bishop and the priest. But this time, the the people in northern Luzon, uh, even the Spaniards uh, included, uh, were described uh, this way. I can assure you, wrote Father Aleman, that of all the Spaniards I met in Manila, there were only two or three who had gone legitimately, that is almost all were fugitives for having been appointed by the court. All the rest were polisones and deserters and creoles from there that are called guachinamos. It would be the greatest human comedy in the world if every resident of Manila were to play his own role because then we would see backs scarred with whip lasses and other marks, hardened soldiers and non-priests celebrating mass and hearing confessions who were punished in Mexico by the Tribunal of the Inquisition. Some found themselves combing wigs, others scratching beards, and still others clutching felons or whipping them. All of this and more you will see in the Philippines. So the point is that uh, at the time that the Alzamiento de Ambaristo uh, broke uh, out, the most of the people then were involved in um, anarchic, an anarchistic uh, uh, activities, and it, uh, according to some uh, historians, the. There were more people in the valleys, in the hinterlands, that were seeking shelter from, from cri such extensive criminality. So uh, the, we could uh, now see that the people at the time were less religious and their desire to fight the monopolies in tobacco, in wine, in all the rest of the products that were consumed by the people in order to raise uh, taxes for the uh, government, uh, the, the people were just not uh, uh, in the, uh, they were not uh, anymore uh, the religious plaque that they were in the time of Diego Silang. In fact, uh, uh, Isabelo de los Reyes, a Bigenio, uh, even wrote here in his book, in 1807, then, people were not predisposed to anything good, and in the month of July, some recruits fled vegan and took refuge in the mountains of Pidig, where they were joined by many discontented people. They tried to get the people of Sarat to rebel. When they failed, however, they returned to the mountains, taking with them the drums that were in the Bantayans, watchtowers of the towns. So, uh, I, I would... Uh, Having em emphasized that the name Basi Revolt is an, a, a very much a misnomer, as also uh, asserted by 
the art historian Patrick uh, Flores, then uh, we might as well uh, make use of the real name used by the historians at that time, which uh, was uh, used the Alzamiento de Ambaristo even up to the uh, American period, up to 1931, when Buenaventura Bellew, another Bigenio uh, historian, that tried to make a recollection of the whole event. Uh, this uh, Alzamiento was uh, very important the way I look at it, in, in the sense that it was the first time that finally the rebels in northern uh, Luzon made use of the term Filipino, not as referring to the traditional meaning of, uh, of Spaniards born in the Islas, Filipinas. That used to be the regular meaning. But remember that uh, I was uh, showing that the Spaniards themselves were so much engaged in mudslinging by name calling. But because at that time, the, the Spain and Mexico were also collapsing as uh, centers of the empire overlooking or uh, controlling the Islas Filipinas. So what, ha what happened was that the term Filipino became marginalized in the midst of the name calling of Guachinangos, Polizones, uh, and whatever uh, bad name they can, the Spaniards can call each other. So that the, uh, the, the rebels in the Alzamiento finally grabbed the term Filipino and use it on themselves as their nom de guerre, as their bonding uh, name to themse for, for themselves. And so this was shown by the, by the historians at the time when they said that the, the constant uh, battle cry of the rebels at the time while they were approaching the uh, the bastion of Bigan, the colonial bastion, their battle cry was Avance Filipino Fuera Españoles. So it was a surprising turn of uh, events and a at, at, uh, at, uh, turnaround in semantics because that term Filipinos were reserved at the, before that the rebellion to the Spaniards born in the Philippines. But now this time, the rebellion uh, grabbed the product of conversion of the term Filipino and then made it into the, their inverted meaning by calling themselves the real Filipinos. Now, uh, how how uh, how sure are we that the inversion of the meaning of Filipino, referring to the Spaniards born in the Philippines, to refer instead to the rebels? Uh, it's very clear in two books uh, uh, written by historians. We have let me the the two books re-evaluating the events and documents of that volatile epoch suffice to supplant the devious propaganda of the colonial rulers and friars that it was merely a change of uh, uh, semantics but not a uh, change of uh, real um, uh, a deeper meaning the the books that uh, are relevant for, for this uh, deeper change of uh, meaning of Filipino from the Spaniard to the rebels 
are the books, the events of 1872, National Glories by Manuel Ortigas y Cuerva, and another book, Father Jose Burgos, a documentary history by John Schumacher. Together, they debunk the, the tr traditional claim of uh, Agoncillo that uh, according to him, there was no national history prior to 1872 because there are no Filipinos then or the Filipinos were not actually the inhabitants fighting for freedom. That is uh, the claim of the idea that before 1872, said uh, uh, Gonsilio, uh, there were there was no national history prior to 1872 because the histories then were written by the friars about their own activities. But what I am now trying to assert here is that the national identity and history was already born in the 1807 revolt and that was the birthing of the new meaning of uh, Filipino to refer only to the Filipinos born uh, uh, to anybody born in the uh, Islas Filipinas. So what I am saying to be to be clear no? what I am saying is that while Filipinos used to the Filipinos as a term used to refer to the name of the king of Spain this time the fighters the uh, in the alzamiento of Ambaristo they are now referring the term Filipinos only to anyone born in Islas Filipinas there is no more uh, referencing to let's say the king the name of the king of Spain Okay, uh, and uh, how did it uh, how did it follow through that the term Filipino finally became our own identity today? Now, what happened was that uh, when the term Filipino was first used as the battle cry to identify the rebels themselves as the real Filipinos, while the Espanoles have been identified by them to be uh, the enemy, to be uh, removed from office. At that time, although there was a lot of bloodshed that uh, led to the defeat of the Alzamiento, the rebels, there that was already the infancy of a, a would-be rebel priest, Padre Jose Burgos, who was also from the north, exactly from Vigan. And at that time, he must have been absorbing in his consciousness many of the legends and as well as the folk memories of that uh, Alzamiento de Ambaristo so that when he was starting to debate, uh, argue with the, with the friars about the, the necessity of advancing the rights of the secular priests into uh, to having more, uh, let's say, cathedrals, more churches, for the secular priests, the, uh, the rebellious father, Padre Burgos, he started calling himself Filipino Indígena. So now we have a new uh, a semantic for the self identification. Self identification of the uh, of Padre Burgos and company by calling himself 
in uh, Filipino indigena, meaning native born Filipino. So that was uh, very empathic. And the next uh, shift to deepening the meaning of uh, Filipino to go deep into the consciousness of uh, people at the time was when Jose Rizal, remember, very much influenced by Padre Burgos, wrote a poem, La Juventud Filipina, Filipina, meaning to the young Filipino, to the youth of the Philippines, he said, you have no other motherland but Filipinas. So we have Padre Burgos influencing uh, Rizal in redefining Filipino and in fact uh, this cannot be doubted the influence of uh, Padre Burgos to Rizal because it was Rizal himself who said that uh, if not for 1872 meaning the martyrdom of Burgos, Gomez and Zamora if not for 1872 I might have not written my novels Rizal said I might have become instead a, a, a Jesuit so that that uh, uh, is an assertion of, uh, that he borrows so much from uh, Padre Burgos, who was the first to make it documentary fact that the Filipino is indigena, and that refers to the freedom fighting batch of inhabitants. And then uh, what is the next uh, shift of the term Filipino was uh, when uh, the, the, um, the rebels themselves in, at the end of the 1800s, meaning the Katipunan-led rebellion, started calling themselves and their act as, let's say, La Filipina, La Revolution Filipina. That was by Apunario Mabini. So, when they, when these uh, freedom fighters went to Malolos in order to make their constitution, they also called their, their end product the Malolos uh, constitution but La Republica Filipina so Filipina has definitely been grabbed and it is the process of inversion that I was referring to the term Filipina has now been grabbed by the freedom fighters that, uh, that it has no longer any value to the uh, to the ruling class, especially to the Spaniards. So, the, but it's not only even in this field of, uh, let's say, political identity, calling their republic La, uh, La Republica de, uh, Filipina. They also called the, the branch of the church, uh, Aglipayan, into Iglesia Filipina Independiente. Okay. So everything has been Filipina, Filipino since the time that it was first uh, ex expressed as a battle cry in the Alzamiento, the Ambaristo, way back in 1807. So we are, now we know that uh, there has already been a, a separation of uh, the semantics of Filipino, Filipina, from the name of the King of Spain. So when uh, in some of my lectures uh, outside, uh, around Asia, uh, I usually was asked by, by some uh, foreigners uh, the question, how come you are the only country that allows uh, itself to be called uh, 
by the name of the king. And so I take the chance to explain uh, what I'm saying now, that the, no, the term Filipino has been uprooted from its uh, former meaning as referring to the king of Spain. It, is, it has been implanted, uprooted there and then implanted to mean the Islas Filipinas that uh, the motherland is called Filipinas and then it, uh, it is already liberated by the uh, revolutionary process that uh, our uh, freedom fighters went through starting from the uh, is, uh, agra uh, starting from the Alzamiento de Ambaristo This is Arnold Molina Asurin sang uh, scholar na natutuwang tawagin ng mga kasama na profesor ng bayan. At uh, ako naman ay nagpapatuloy sa tuloy-tuloy na pagbabago ng ating mga insights sa ating kasaysayan at heritage. Maraming salamat po.